Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gatorade Superdome Classic Class 3A State Championship Game. First, the visiting team from District 10 with a record of 11 and 3, the Edna Carr Cougars. And the home team from District 8 with a record of 14 and 0, the Amy Warriors. Whatever. to be performed by the Amit Warrior Band under the direction of Mr. Nick Savarino, Drum Major Jennifer Bagby. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to turn your attention to midfield for the presentation of the LHSAA Sports Care Coaches Awards. Presenting the awards representing Sports Care Louisiana is Mr. Ty Henry. Mr. Henry is Regional Manager for Sports Care of Louisiana. The first award goes to Amy High Head Coach Donald Correa. The next award goes to Edna Carr High School Head Coach Don Waddingney. The LHSA once again thanks SportsCare, the official health care network of the LHSA. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the AAA State Championship. It's the Cougars and the Warriors. Are you? Cougars and the Warriors here in the Class 3A state championship matchup. Coach Don Watney has been here before, twice before. And he's got one state championship to show for those efforts. And for a meet, Coach Donald Career has been here previously, taking Franklinton here and winning with his Amit squad. Last time they were in this dome over St. James. Look out, the Warriors with the opening kickoff of the game and we're underway. Check that the Cougars with the opening kickoff. The car Edna Carr will have it first and 10 just shy of the 40 yard line after a 22 yard gain to begin this contest. And Tyrone Charles leaves the game with a bit of a limp and he may be someone to need to depend on as the game goes on. He's big play type receiver and tailback for the Cougars. Good return right here, a middle, middle return, good blocking, breaks a couple of tackles and gets him in fine field position for the first possession. First offensive play, Cedric Welsh, car quarterback, finding pay dirt. Michael St. Jr. is his top receiver, hauling that one in. Six-yard pickup, it'll be second and four. 
You know, the thing about St. Junior is defensively, you have to be very aware of where he is, as we spoke of in the pregame. He's a game breaker and the best receiver ever with a 4 5 speed. Uh, he is somebody you really need to watch. 32 grabs for 789 yards. Of course, the Cougars able to do it through the air as well as on the ground. There's a big offensive push up front. We expect a very physical game here this evening, Renee. Two big teams, two hard-hitting teams. Timmy Charles on that carry. It will be a first down for the Cougars. When Charles doubles up, his duties also include defensive end. You know, up front for the Cougars, they man that front with a 6'5", 360-pound center, Michael Spetsiosis. And, uh, boy, he is a load. Uh, he opens a gap just stepping forward, three-year starter, and does a good job. One of the strongest on the team. First down, Welsh on the keeper. Plenty of purple around him after a nominal pickup. The charge led by Dorsett Buckles, the senior. 6-0-220, the linebacker. Zeroes in on Cedric Welsh. Good look at Welsh here running right down the line in scrimmage. Options to keep the ball, and he was sniffed out immediately. You know, Dor Dorset Buckles dominates up front. His brother played for the LSU Tigers in 1990-91 and 92, Carlton. And uh, Dorset has some suitors after his services. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, you cannot replace the big 6'1", 6'2", 225-pound senior. Possible mix-up in the backfield there as Welsh looked to hand it off one way, and Ephraim Okacha finally makes the stop. He's a blitz guy and does come in from his outside linebacker, Okacha, with a 6 feet, 175, 4 5 speed. What speed this Warrior defense has, as we mentioned, nine starters out of 11, Gerald, with 4 6 speed or better. And boy, I tell you what, that's unbelievable to, to realize that nine starters on defense possess that kind of speed. Third and six at the Warrior 45. Welsh looks to pass, three-step drop, airs it out in the flat, and too hard, overthrows his intended receiver on the play, Aaron Singleton, the senior, and the Cougars will be forced to punt. And Welsh just drops back. The senior has been the uh, main bell cow, if you will, the Cougar attack on offense, and they'll have to relinquish the ball after a short drive. 9.23 to go in the first. Bell cow. Bell cow. Short punt by Ezemife. We'll come back, and Carr will down it, and... Amito will have an opportunity to put it in play. First and ten as the Warriors will come out on offense. Well, the last time the Warriors won a state championship here in the Dome, they had a special offensive receiver, P.J. Franklin. Yeah, he was the most valuable player in that game. Went on a fame and uh, prominence with Tulane and has went, wound up with the New Orleans Saints on the practice squad. It looks like he may have a, a bit of a future in the NFL. Well, both these teams have gotten used to winning, Renee. Nine game winning streak for Carr currently as they are 11 and three. A meet 14 and 0 and undefeated, dominating undefeated Benton last week to get here. Carr defeating Turling's Catholic to make it here in the dome. There's Don Watney. Well, he's, he like many coaches have earned his way here and Don does such an outstanding job on the high school level as uh, contemplating maybe calling it quits after this game. But uh, I'll tell you what a loss it would be to high school sports if he chose to do so. Nominal pickup for the Warriors. Well, of course, Don's had some health concerns in the recent years. Feeling fine now, but able to rally from that. And I know that uh, certainly makes one become a little more reflective. And he has had tr tremendous success at Carr. And I tell you, his Cougars tend to give him some of the close games, you know, just a three-point game last week. Overtime win against Independence uh, and meets district arch rival. That being back in the uh, regional round. Big second down pickup there. 
C.J. Baptiste, their outstanding running back, carrying the pile. And C.J. mustered up 1,036 yards, averaging 6.4 yards per total. He's got 14 scores to his credit. Very tough to bring down. Uh, 5'11", 225 with 4'5 speed. He's a total package, Gerald, and he will explode into you. Third and short for the Warriors. Whistles look like there might have been motion against the purple. This could make it a third and six rather than a third and one. And it is. So that'll make it a little more challenging for a meet. Coach Career with a 14-0 record unscathed. And we mentioned dead ball foul. He came here with Franklin Jim. Ball start. He's the on the brother of uh, David Career, who's head coach at Kentwood. Beat his brother 13 to nothing earlier on, and uh, has an outstanding job here. Does a great job with the Meat Warriors, and uh, two teams that also deserve to be here. Carr with an 11 3 record, and of course a Meat unscathed 14 and 0. Look out, quarterback keeper, big hole, and more into the secondary. Past midfield. That's Brandon Wagner. Big 22 yard pickup. It'll be first and 10 for the Warriors. And Wagner really is a total package. The senior makes very good decisions, runs that offense, makes good decisions as he runs. Just a big dive right here and follows around the left side as Daryl Edwards lays a good block for him. And he's in a secondary, running loose for a first down. And Wagner with a nice pickup. First and ten. Look out, Baptiste again. Huge hole. Streaking down the middle of the field. Dropped inside the 20-yard line. And boy, he gets ahead of steam. He's running downfield, or downhill, after a first couple of steps. Gerald and he's a 27-yard scamper that last run. You know this guy. Squats 620 pounds, so you're not going to hit him low and bring him down. He had to really unload on him. He's running in the open here like a mini bus if you reach to break, and he's running downhill. And uh, they horse collar him around the 15 yard line, but so what nice pickup for Bartiste. Carr wants to talk about it as it meets moving early. Got it first down to the Cougar 13 here in this Triple A state final. It's first and ten for a meet at the Cougar 13-yard line. Good look right there at Don Watney. The gentleman next to him is Wayne Hardy, former All-American in track at Southeast University. And I'll tell you what, if people around here may remember Tommy Smith and Ralph Smith, when they formed a formidable team there at Southeast Louisiana University in the 70s. Baptiste again. Wow. Look at that power down just shy of the goal line. I tell you, he's laying some punishment on those car tacklers. That's Jerome Bettis running when he runs. Very, very tough guy to bring down. Likes to isolate him on a defensive player. And not only is he power, but he can bounce. He's got, got some great feet. Four or five speed, tremendous leg drive. And, uh, you know, Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, and Tulane are among his suitors. And uh, those four schools probably may get his signature come signing date. He has over a thousand yards. He missed a couple of games, so he's really, really a force. Wow. They're going to measure. He's close enough for the measurement. And uh, well, well beyond the marker. Good half to three quarters of a yard, so it'll be first and goal for the Warriors who are cooking early in this one. As Cars had an in initial possession and been stopped, and now he meet moving forward. Quarterback keeper surged straight ahead into the end zone for the touchdown. Brandon Wagner picks up the first points of this AAA game. And the Amit Warriors ranked number one all season long. Assert their dominance early here with a six play, 72 yard drive. And 
Brandon Wagner just driving forward behind the blocks of Harvey Edwards, Hutchinson, Lewis, and McGee, and uh, gets him to the end zone, breaks the plane. Extra point of coming, 6.39 here in the first quarter. Extra point from Damian Thompson is good. Warriors on top by a score in this Triple A Gatorade Superdome Classic. Here's a good look at Wagner, the quarterback, Brandon, 6'1", 185 pounds senior, scoring the first TD here, but it was also the running of teammate C.J. Baptiste that helped put a meet in position of that. High kickoff, and Carr will gather it in and bring it back up the field. Wow, stiff tackle. 12-yard return for Corey Charles. Cedric Welsh will trot back on the field and see if he can't work some magic of his own. Well, Marcus Bennett on the stop here, and it's a, a stout stop. A nice return here until he ran to the brick wall. Looks like somebody left a bicycle in the driveway, didn't see it. Kind of high tackle, and kind of just sheds that block and grabs it. <laughs> Didn't have much forward progress after that stop. I mean, it's turn uh, to turn on defense, see what they can do with all that speed. Again, nine players on defense with four, six speed or better, and it's just tough to beat speed. Good size as well as they go 220, 220, 220, 205 across the front four. Welsh with a flag down will turn it upfield and get it past some, the 25. There was some confusion on the elite defense there. as St. Junior's was left all alone, and then only until late, right before the ball was snapped, was covered, but the Cougars are whistled for a legal procedure. That'll cost them five yards. You know, the thing about Welsh is he may not have the best numbers as far as height, weight, and, and speed. He's 5'11", 185, 4'7", speed. You can't measure hard, Gerald, and he is a game-type player. When the light goes on, he just goes to a different level, lifts that team up. Really cerebral kind of guy. Uh, he was hurt for a couple of playoff games, and they, behind the uh, efforts of Tory Dennis and company, they uh, captured a couple of wins. But if it wouldn't be a quarterback, he would be an outstanding running back, just a great athlete. Magnese and Southern Mississippi are looking at him perhaps as a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or as a defensive back. I'll tell you something else about him, too. He's had a lot of experience in this system playing for Don Watney now starting in his third season. Obviously, he knows the system. Ajanavi as a mefe, straight ahead. Chris Gordon on the stop of as a mefe. Ace, we call him Ace, and that's what Don Watney said, call him Ace. Uh, he's got a lot of natural abilities. Got six touchdowns to his credit. Good hole right there was filled kind of quickly by Troy Brumfield, a 6'3", 205-pound junior. Kind of a plugger and just great picture book tackle on Ace. And, uh, you know, he's going to be a good one. He's only a sophomore, 4'6 speed, penalty of being assessed against the Warriors. Personal foul against the Warriors, so that'll tack 15 on to the end of the run. And you mentioned Ace is only a sophomore. He played a key role in some of the victories. And that's uh, kind of what's ignited this car team this year. They've had a different player step up at a different juncture. Last time they were here, they had a Patrick Sertan on the roster, who, of course, is now at Miami, and Noel Ellis playing for him at that time, who is at Tulane. Welsh's pass complete to his tight end, Kenneth Martin. Intended for Kenneth Martin. You know, he's got <clears throat> Coach Watney has six players on defense at our, our college recruits, and one may be a star of the future. We'll talk about him as time goes on. But so many great players have come through this system, as well as just as a quick drop. Uh, out to the flat, incomplete. But, uh, you know, he, the Watkins, David Watkins has come through here, Patrick Sertain, Al Seed Sertain, uh, you know, so many great players. Noel Ellis, Jerry Phillips, all come through the system here. Dunlop from, uh, from uh, Tulane University as well. Timmy Charles. 
Charles running on the inside. There'll be another whistle and a stoppage in play. And the officials are going to call both teams in and speak to them early. Well, we talked about how physical this game would be, and when you see something like this, it's the officials attempt to keep control of the contest. And since we're halfway through the first quarter, things are being explained to the players early on. Obviously, some things being said and some hits being taken down there, and the official just wants to remind everyone to keep it within the rules. There's a lot at stake here, and in many, many ways, in many uh, situations, some of these players take their uniform off for the last time and won't have an opportunity to go to the next level and play college football. And everything is on the line. Most of these players, many of places, they're five and six years old, and it's a tough, tough thing to take that helmet off for the very last time of your football career. And both these teams known as defensive teams. It was figured this would be a defensive, hard-hitting struggle. Wow, Walsh's pass batted down. Intended on the play for Jonathan Sam. Morgan Reed with the bat away to strong safety. Pretty much of an overachiever. He gives you 110% all the time and watches Reed extends his six foot frame in the path of the football, knocks it away, swats it away. You know, this kid, you're not going to fool him. He has a four point GPA and he knows his, his responsibilities and does them very well. Kick by Ace off and uh, out of bounds. Kick out of bounds on the play. And it'll be first and 10 for a meet. We'll get another look at C.J. Baptiste. A 31-yard punt there. 5.02 left here in the first quarter. The Wildcats have the 7 nothing advantage. You know, as we see Brandon Wagner approach the huddle for the next series, he kind of reminds me a little bit of a guy who you may recall has been through here. A guy named Michael Carr was a quarterback at a meet, went on to play at Clemson, and uh, he was one of the better athletes to come from the meeting quite a while. He played back in the early 80s, I think it was 83. And uh, what an athlete he was, and Brandon Wagner brings back some memories of Michael Carr. Tough running on the inside. Appeared to be Baptiste with the ball. Go over the left side. It is. He's got that low center of gravity, and he explodes into you. He, he takes the hit to the defensive player. Won't let you sit back and hit him. He likes to take it to you. And boy, he really has great body lean, good explosion. Look at that leg drive. Can't teach that. And uh, with a 5'11", 225-pound frame, he's going to make someone a great catch on the college level. Second and a long six, or short seven. Wagner on the keeper will be hauled down. Looks like just shy of the first down. Howard Ross on the tackle. Brandon Wagner. Big Howard's a two-way performer, and with that 40 defense of the Cougars really does an outstanding job. Every man has a good responsibility as uh, Jamar Waiters is out looking for someone to bring down, and good effort as well by Michael Holmes, defensive end number 83. He doubles as a tight end, and boy, I tell you, he's going to make someone a great catch. 6'2", 220, 485, 40. He's played some wide receiver. They haven't managed the defensive end spot this evening. Baptiste into the line. How can you deny that on third and short? He'll pick up the first down just across the 45. I don't know if many teams on a Sunday could stop the surge. That young man and, and that team blocking. He's really does a great job. And uh, credit the left side of the line with Hutchinson and Lewis with great blocks, allowing Batiste to get it to the uh, beyond the first down mark. Well, Cars Lone State Championship coming in 1993. 13-10 win in overtime. Over Cecilia. Macon Gartez was on that team. This play fools absolutely no one as Oscar Perry's hauled down. Michael Holmes was the first man there. Donovan Grayson really kind of corralled that play there. Watch number 82 step in and prevent anything from going beyond him. Can't see him. He's not in your picture right now, but 82 turns it back in right there, you see, and then 
uh, Holmes arrives to make the stop, help make the stop. But Donovan Grayson, 6'6", 218 pounds, 465, 40. They call him Tree. Even though he's a junior, Gerald, LSU Tulane are a couple of schools monitoring his progress. And, boy, he's going to be a great one. They think he, along the same lines, athletically, as a Robert Royal or David Watkins, who went on a sign with the LSU Tigers. Wagner got his target and more into the secondary. It's a foot race for the far pylon. In for the touchdown. Nathan Solomon takes the pass from Brandon Wagner. A 65-yard touchdown pass and run. And it meets on top. We'll check it. He'll be down at the one. So he did not get in. But thought he got in there. A little crossing pattern, perhaps, as Wagner waits for him to clear in the middle. And he takes it in with that 4-5 speed. You are not going to catch him from behind. But he does his best as Got his Laganya. knee down, yes. Laganya does the best to, to catch him at the at the corner of the end zone. And it's not a score yet. And they now have a opportunity to hold the Warriors out. But boy, I tell you what, he exploded. Solomon exploded. That's his 12th catch of the season. Good pass by Wagner. Kendrick Paul almost getting his hands on the ball. Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that from that angle. It looked like his knee was down. Yeah, his knee was definitely down, but it looked like the ball had broken the plane. 2.16 left here. Amit threatening to add to its seven-point lead in this AAA Gatorade Superdome Classic. <laughs> On the first play, into the end zone for the touchdown this time unequivocally and Amit has added to its lead and Brandon Wagner with the second Amit score at the 211 mark and the as you see great surge up front good blocking by Hutchinson, Harvey Edwards and company, allowing him to break the plane into the end zone for the second touchdown. And Amit takes a 13 and nothing lead. Extra point is up and good by Damian Thompson. A six play, 66 yard drive. Makes it 14 nothing Warriors with 2.11 left here in the first quarter. You're watching the AAA Gatorade Super Home Classic. Well, this is a situation Coach Don Watney hadn't experienced since the beginning of the season. The Cougars 2-3 and three to begin the year before they rattled off nine straight wins. And Coach Don used to dominating, not being dominated very early in this one, but he meets come out loaded for bear. High, deep kickoff. Gee whiz, this will be an automatic touchback, and it is. He almost kicked it out to Porter Street. You know, the, the Cougars allowing 11 points per game. They're already beyond that. It was still two minutes and 11 seconds to go here in the first stanza. A meet ranked number one all season long. Carr having a taxing pre district, playing teams like West Jefferson, and Carver, John Curtis. That's a district game. Yes, Curtis, one of the games they played during the season. Curtis will be playing for a state title tomorrow. He talked about Donald's career, his brother David at Kentwood. He'll play for a state championship tomorrow. So I would imagine David in attendance tonight. Donald will be in attendance tomorrow, each brother supporting the other. Wow. Not much running space there. Teron Williams met immediately. Barbara Williams. Barbara Williams. Barbara Wilson is a big 6'2", 220 pound defensive end. Watch, he sheds a block, comes right off and scrapes off to the left. And you can see why LSU, Louisiana Tech, Tulane, and Southern Mississippi are interested in his services. Go along with an all district performer the last two years. He's got a 3.8. GPA runs to the ball. You know, by the way, he's such a good student. His mom is a teacher. Very proud of him, I'm sure. Obviously, a, a little extra credit work there at home. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he gets it. 
Gets it all the time. I'm always keeping up after and make sure he's doing that homework. Timeout on the field. We'll take it as well. 123 left. Carr looking to pick up some offense. They trail by a couple of scores. Timeout. It'll be second and ten for the Cougars. Welch with a split backfield. He'll fake the handoff. Look to pass, but there's no one to throw the ball to. He'll have to eat it. Well, whoever he was trying to throw the ball to couldn't release off the line of scrimmage. Don't know if it was his tight end on that side. Leonard Brumfield disrupts things. Michael Holmes over there on the far side. You see 83 stacked up, couldn't get through the line. Welsh had to eat it. I'll tell you what, Brumfield comes pouring in from the outside and spills him. He's 5'11", 220-pound defensive end. He's going to be back next year. He will be a blue chip recruit, 4'6", 40. What a, such a good athlete, Gerald. Not only is a defensive end, as a running back, he had 80 yards rushing in the second half against LaRanja. He'll be a fullback or linebacker on the next level. Welsh pumps, lets it fly, it's complete. St. Junior's hit the ball, and he'll be escorted out of bounds at the 35, but the chains will move. So some good arm strength that time by Welsh to get it out to St. Junior's, and St. Junior's doing a good job to come back to the ball for the 12-yard game. Well, he's a heady receiver, and he's got all the receiving records at Edna Carr High School. Puts a good move on the defensive back as... Uh, Patrick Warf Warford comes up to make this stop, and as you mentioned, that scores him out of bounds, but you cannot stop him. You can only slow down St. Junior's four five speed, very explosive. Had an ankle injury early on, but I tell you, every time he touches the ball, 24.6 yards per catch. Inside handoff, ace spinning just over the 30. We'll be lucky to have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. You know, they feel he'll be one of the best in the city by the time he's a senior. He played defensive back early on this season, and uh, as he grew more comfortable with the offense, they gave him more opportunities as Buckles has a hold of his ankle and brings him down all district. He's a leading tackler with 120 stops. Good luck at Buckles right there. LSU Tulane, USL Magnese, and Louisiana Tech are interested in the senior linebacker. First quarter comes to a close. It's all Warriors here. At the Superdome, 14 nothing to meet on top of car. Dorset Buckles and company have done a good job defensively for the Warriors, and Amit's offense has helped to ignite it as well. Second and ten for Welsh. Drop, look. Will be flushed out of the pocket, dropped in the backfield, and hog tied and spatula down to the ground by James Brown, the junior. And James Brown, he's most physical up front. 4-8 speed in the 40. He's reckless, a little bit on a crazy side, rise, rises to a challenge, but believe me, he is a man, a little over aggressive at times, but you like that in defensive lineman, and boy, I tell you what, could not coverage, did not allow Wells to release the ball in Brown. Talk about a scary sight, huh? Seeing that guy coming after you. Wow. He just piled, drove him into the ground. Flags. The Amit players approve. Let's see if Carr was a little over anxious. That ball foul. The Cougars are, the Cougars are now going backwards. That's their second penalty. Good career. Has to be somewhat happy with the results thus far as he <clears throat> begin the second stanza with a 14-point advantage. And Carr facing a third in about uh, two days for a first. Welsh. Counter to the near side. Aaron Singleton knocked down by Lamarcus Bennett. 
It'll bring up fourth down, and Ace will drop back the punt. A little misdirection, tries to catch him on their heels a little bit, but, you know, I guess the only way you have any success, good blocking, of course, but you have to run straight at him. You cannot let them chase you down, because they will do it and catch you on the weak side and make the tackle. Uh, so much speed on Amit. It's been a long time since any, any one team has had that much speed on defense. High wobbly kick. Jarrell Carter will come up, but it'll bound down and go out of bounds. And Amit will have decent field position with which to work once again. 37-yard punt. Baptiste in the first quarter, Rene, already 61 yards on but five carries. His long run of 36 yards, that's a 12.2 average. Wagner's got 32 yards on four carries. Why throw when you're doing it through the air? But they did as well. They had a 63-yard pass completion that set up uh, Wagner's touchdown. Time of possession is pretty close. Six minutes for Cougars, 641-519 for Amy. No sign of support right there in the Superdome. Dead ball. Encroachment on the offense. First down. Encroachment is assessed against the Warriors. We'll bring him back. That is the third time the Warriors have been assessed a penalty. And it's going to push him back to a first and 15. Wagner, look out. Baptiste is in his secondary, and he's gone. At the 30, at the 15, into the end zone, C.J. Baptiste busting through the middle has given him a three touchdown advantage, a 62-yard run. And Baptiste just exploded out of the backfield, and you're not going to catch him from behind, even though he's 5'11", 225, a little squatty. Well, I'll tell you what, you're not going to catch him from behind, and he just ran away from the would-be tacklers for his second touchdown, and I'll tell you what, what a great effort here uh, from Baptiste. Great hole, right? Six carries, 123 yards for Baptiste, and Gerald, they are starting to make this Watt in the gap, and it's going to be tough for Coach Watney and his staff to come back after this. The AT is good. 10-02 left here in the second quarter. A meet in control of this Class 3A championship. Another look at the touchdown run. It's as much as Batiste as it is his offensive line. And he just runs away from a would-be tackler. Percy Crockett just couldn't bring him down. Switches that ball, too, from hand to hand. Yeah, he stiff arms, which is a sign of a good running back. And I'll tell you what, I, you can see why the schools are looking at him. He'll be a great feature back at the next level in some of the South Southeastern Conference schools, Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, of course, hometown Tulane may give him an opportunity on signing day. through the goalpost. That's a little bit of overkill. Of course, anything that makes it into the end zone in high school football is an automatic touchback. That's an automatic touchback and then some. Happy young lady from Amit. Warriors ranked number one all season long. Picked up the top seed in the playoffs in this first year of seeding. Had their way over Northwest in the first round, a shutout, 42-0. Winsboro on the road, a 48-19 win. And then Notre Dame in the quarters, 28-21. And then undefeated Benton at home, 21-8. They only had that one road game again the regional round. Big hole straight up the middle. Nice pickup for the Cougars. That'll be a 15-yard gain and a first down for Timmy Charles. Jimmy Charles, a nice effort, and Coach Watney and staff come roaring back with a nice play on that first series after that touchdown. And Charles with a 
Late run, good block, good seal block on the inside. Did pick up a number, looked like, like it might have been Will Laughlin with a good block and a little pulling action and did a great job with an outstanding block. Welsh to throw. Overshoots his intended receiver, Ace. He had him open, just couldn't get the ball to him in time. Aces, I tell you, he'll be great as he as he uh, becomes more relaxed and comfortable in that running back position. Welsh trying to air it out a little too tall for him, and he was going against the direction he was running in. He had to reach back and make the catch. Stops the clock. 9:26, second and ten for the Cougars. Card needs some positive momentum on offense. Welsh. Looks to pass, has his man in and out of his hands. Center Kenneth ball. Martin, the split end, could not hang on to the ball. Should have caught that one, a tough throw by Welch. You know, they don't throw that often, about 10 or 12 times per game, so they're a little ahead of schedule here. And they're kind of taking on, trailing by 21 points there, taking themselves out of their initial game plan and got to make those catches. Young sophomore will get another opportunity. You know, Don Watney's been around a long time. In fact, Ed Nakar taught Coach Watney in school. I, I didn't know that. Yes. Ed Nakar was his teacher. There's Coach Don, of course. A lot of success at this school on the junior high level here in New Orleans. Playing varsity ball less than 10 years. They've been here to the Superdome Classic three times. St. Junior's on the reception up at the 41-yard line. Seven-yard pickup. You know, the thing is about St. Junior's, you have to be very aware of where he is. One false step as a defensive back, and he'll turn on you and go. If you face up on him, his speed is such a great first step and explosion. He'll turn on you, and uh, he doesn't match up with anybody with that uh, great routes he runs and a great speed and explosion out of his cuts. On fourth down, ace back to kick. Little pressure gets off a pretty good kick that Carter will gather in off the fair catch. 30 yard kick, no return. And with 8.25 left, we'll see CJ Baptiste and company come out once again. Well, what a game he's had thus far. And the Carr Cougar defense is certainly up to the challenge. And can make some big plays. They've done it all season long with an 11-3 record. And you don't get this far without great individual effort. You know, we mentioned they have six players on that defense that are college prospects and a up-and-coming junior, Eric Henderson, number 95, who mans that defensive end position, who could be a star of the future. Flags on this play. Looks like the infraction will go against the meet. Motion against the Warriors. Good ball foul. Ball start. Offense. That's the fourth penalty against the Warriors. 30 yards in infractions. And that's been about the only thing that's been able to slow down this immediate offense. Renee, three possessions, three scores. They had two big running plays by Batiste and a big pass completion by Wagner to set up Wagner's touchdown for the second score. Little initial. Right there, surge right on the there. Right side, the right guard. Roosevelt McGee, a little too. You don't have to say his name. Well, no, but he knows who he is. Believe me, I'll, and, and when he makes a good block, I'll point that out as well. I would hope so. Two years started, does a great job in this right, to, right tackle position. He's for bigger the than you, you know. Yes, he is. Another infraction against the meat. We'll move it back another five. Now the task will be somewhat more daunting for the Warriors. It'll be first and 20. On the near side sweep. That's 
Oscar Perry with the ball. Michael Holmes tracks him down, and as a defender, this is the this is the situation you want the offense in. Long yardage to pick up for a conversion. Holmes, his position is you can have to contain that wide kind of uh, running, and he does a good job on this play containing the run. You know, he, he's played some tight end split receiver. Good speed for a defensive end, 4 8 5 6 2, 2 20. He'll probably play more offense. Could be an linebacker in the next level, but he'll make someone a great catch. Fake that time to Perry sweeping left, and Baptiste will get the call. Eric Henderson there for the stop. That was a, that was a stout stop there. Rene. Baptiste, not much running daylight there. No, he they closed the door on him. And it'll be third and a ton. Specifically defined here as 18. And Perry once again. Well, they ran that play three times with him sweeping. They gave it to him twice, faked it once. And Howard Ross with the stop. You know that speed, you want to isolate Perry on the outside, which they do good. Freeze the inside people with that fake to Baptiste. But you know, Perry with that 4-5 speed has 895 yards on the season, five touchdowns. And uh, boy, he's a weapon. Got a good look right there at Howard Ross, two-way performer from his defensive tackle position. Uh, won't be a defensive end in college, USL. Delta State and Northwest Louisiana are all looking at him and does a great job on offense as well. Derek Hornsby in for the punt. He's gathered in by the Cougars at their own 45. And Malcolm Woods is knocked down after a nominal game. Very first and 10. The Cougars with decent field position, just shy of midfield. They've got just over six minutes left here in this first half with. which is to try to put some points on the board. You see as he's trying to return, Corral, but uh, Woods does a good job setting uh, Welsh and company up. First down, 6.14 to go here in the second. Welsh keeps the option. He had ace on the outside. Turns it up the field. A gain of maybe one. Dorsett buckles there. Senior 6 0 220. You know, he could be a great running back. He is so athletic. Look at his picture book tackle. Staying at home, filling the lanes. Buckles just steps in that gap and makes the stop. 4 5 9 40, 6 feet 225. Runs to the ball. He's got 120 stops to his credit, go along with four interceptions. So he's had quite a year. All on the left hand side closes quickly for Timmy Charles. Hand off to Timmy Charles and the six foot 220 pound senior running behind some help, Will Rockland and company. It's really tackled hard by Leonard Brumfield. Nice pick up third and about four yards to go. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of purple jerseys on every stop with great team speed and tackling ability the Warriors have. You look right there at James Brown. Boy, I tell you, I wouldn't want to run into him. And they say in a dark alley, I wouldn't want to run into him in a library in the midday. On third down, St. Junior's with the reception. Sheds a tackle, but gets absolutely jackhammered inside of the 35. Applying the punishment, Jarrell Carter. That's an 11-yard reception. And you can bet Carter's going to be a big-time recruit next year. Look at St. Junior's, the explosiveness he has. Reminds you a little bit of a Larry Foster. I don't know if it's a number or not, but boy, I tell you, what a good job. Look at this. Ooh. He he was set up in a, and demolished. Jarrell Carter, great athlete, makes some good plays, and he really laid the lumber on Michael St. Junior's. One teammate held him up. The other one finished off the product. Is making the initial contact was Patrick Warford. And he held him up and as you mentioned, Carter just polished him off. I'm sorry, that was uh 
Wofford, Wofford is down right now, so. He was. He took some of that punishment himself. When, it hurt uh, his own teammate. He hit him so hard. He came into that play full speed, too. There was no slowing down. Hit like that will take the taste out of your mouth, Gerald. First down, you know, for the Cougars. Nonetheless, it'll be first down for Carr as they try to move the ball down the field. Very important for the Cougars. He might have got the wind that knocked out of him as both St. Junior's. Looks like St. Junior's helmet hit his on the rebound almost. Look out. Flag down St. Junior's with speed to the outside. Good pursuit that time. You can credit Chris Gordon. That's a linebacker out there tracking down St. Junior's and forcing that play outside. Not allowing St. Junior's to turn it in. Let's read this flag. It could be a hold as the Cougars tried to come back the other way against the grain. Maybe coming back against the Cougars and a good play. As you mentioned, the athleticism possessed by Gordon, who plays that man's that outside linebacker position and will run you down with that 4-6 speed. Holding against Carr, personal foul against a meet. If the personal foul is a dead ball, we'll see how that plays out. As opposed to if it happened during the play, which would be offsetting. Well, well, foul. Foul. We have holding, holding on the on offense. offense. We have a dead, dead ball. ball. Late, Late hit, hit, out of bounds, on, on the defense. defense. Both will be penalized. So that's going to be an automatic first down for Carr. They're going to lose some yardage here. But they're also going to get the first down. As you can see, as Milton Harrell kind of closes on him. Wow, it's, he looked like he may have let him go. I, really uh, didn't yeah, see I don't the know hit. about that. And he fell more on him. More of a push out of bounds there. But, you know, they did have that that conversation they had with both teams they may try to be set a precedent here so that uh, they will kind of avoid any kind of uh, extracurricular activity if, if you will so consequently it'll be first down and a long five for Carr after the automatic for after the holding penalty and then the automatic first down you can see how low Welsh gets to the ground in that squat look out he wants it all going deep badly underthrown was intended with a receiver on the play, Malcolm Woods, right there, nowhere near the ball. A couple of purple jerseys, however, were by the ball, and it'll be second down. And Woods is pleading on deaf ears as he felt he was grabbed, and his uh, progress was interrupted. Ball was evidently a timing route, which was interrupted by some something that we did not see in the camera. So Welsh would try it again, second and five, 4-14, stopping the clock, trailing by 21. Not a bad call to make there with a first and five. Might as well throw it downfield. Pass complete, incomplete. Harrisley close to being a lateral. Virginia could not find the handle as well as just with a one-step drop and, and toss. And coming up to close was Morgan Reed, but it was incomplete and stopping the clock once again, third down. And, and the Cougars cannot muster any kind of offense thus far. They've been able to move it down into a meet territory, Renee, here after the last possession, after the meet punt, but they need to keep it moving forward. They, they, they really need some points before halftime. This is a big third down for them. I'd almost say in four down territory at this point. Wow. Well, that's not going to help out. Chris Gordon there for the stop. Big play for the Warriors. I don't give the Carr Cougars a little bit more to think about. Instead of fourth and five, it's fourth and long. The, co the coverage brought this on here as Gordon just was relentless in his, in his uh, surge and his pursuit. And the defensive backfield did not allow a receiver to be open. And Gordon comes down with an all-district, two-time all-district performer, two-year starter. and. Really plays at a high level 
Come game time, 5'9", 215, a senior. Carr spends its final timeout to discuss the fourth down and eight yard situation it finds itself in. It's a meet by three touchdowns in this AAA state championship game. Fourth down. Welsh hit as he throws and incomplete. He had an open receiver downfield. Jonathan Sam was there, but more strong pressure by the Purple Warriors, and the ball goes over on downs, and he meets. We have another chance to inflict more damage into the Cougar defense with 3.37 and two timeouts left here in the first half. Okacha and Brumfield collaborate as they meet at the quarterback. You can see number 32 and number 48 coming from their blitz package and really do an outstanding job squelching that drive. 3.37 to go and as you mentioned, a meet with a three touchdown cushion right now and Carr's gonna have to come up with some defensive big play. Someone needs to step up. Some big time players make big time plays and Carr has done it before. Fake to Perry. Wagner wants to throw. Look out. Talk about a big time play. How about an interception? How about a nice return on the interception? How about a great return on the interception? A flag comes down, hauled inside of the 10 yard line. It's a 52 yard return. Nile will gain you the man to do it. I'm sure it's going to come back away as a block on the return. But still, nonetheless, yeah, clip on the return, but the interception is going to stand. Renee, you were talking about a big play. You got it. After, After the interception, interception, we have a clip, clip on Carr. First down, Carr. And Lagania played Perry just as he was supposed to, as you draw it up on the chalkboard. 4-5 speed, comes up with interception, Gerald, number six. He had a couple of them last week against Turlings. Boy, look at this. He played this like a center fielder and just took it away from him. Scoots along the sidelines, get a couple of uh, blocks, and had it not been for that in, that clip. That clip's going to hurt, too, because really they would have had it first and goal inside the 10. Yes, and it's going to bring know, it and, back and, now. And then you got a good shot at punching in the end zone here. You've got Cougar. almost 45 yards to go to score, as opposed to less than 10. If Carr's able to punch it in before halftime, it'll make the point moot. But they need a score. They can go in with a little momentum here at halftime and have something to talk about. Welsh, the pass, incomplete. Intended for St. Junior's on a crossing route, a little slant. Couldn't find his mark. St. Junior's with 34 catches on the season, along with seven touchdowns. You know, we mentioned he is a game breaker. No matter how you get it to him, Gerald, 24.6 yards every time he grabs the ball. And, well, that is dangerous. That's a couple first downs every time. Sponsoring state 36 yards through the air so far for Welsh. He's completed four out of his 13 attempts. Welsh, option near side. Ace has it, but it's strung out. And see, this is what we were talking about. Your, your options are limited. If you're back at the 43-yard line. If you had it first and goal inside the 10, you could at least come away with a field goal. But here, cars can be hard-pressed. Out of timeouts. And a good bit of real estate away from the end zone. And you just can't outrun the speed. Wilson with, you know, 6'2", 220 with 4'5 speed. Look at this. What a physical specimen. He's running down a 200-pound running back. All district type. Runs to the ball. Will chase you down. And he'll be an outside linebacker at the next level. But LSU, Louisiana Tech, Tulane, and Southern Mississippi are hot after on his trail for the big senior defensive end from the meet. Reverse, look, look out, they want to throw it. Pass down the field, incomplete, underthrown. St. Junior's was the intended receiver. Laganya, the man who had the interception moments ago, trying to come up with the magic. St. Junior's a little frustrated. What an athlete he is, goes both ways at times, fills in the defensive backfield position, and of course we all know about his expertise on offense as a wideout. So the flip ends up being a big story here. Don't look at the LHSAA shirt. Modeling the T-shirt for the Gatorade Classic. They're on sale at Gates. Do you have one of those shirts, Renee? No. 
I don't have one. I, that might be a nice purchase, though. Let me know. My size is extra large. Pick me up one. Fair catch by Amit. Carter coming up to make it. It'll be first and ten. Thirty-yard punt. The Warriors with 251 and two timeouts. This is deja vu. This is where we were just a moment ago. The Louisiana High School Athletic Association thanks State Farm Insurance and the Louisiana State Farm agents. State Farm sponsoring all state championship trophies and awards in all 23 sports of the LHSAA. LHSAA also thanks Gatorade, the official thirst quencher and title sponsor of the Superdome Classic. Your local Southern Quality Ford dealer, presenting sponsor of the Superdome Classic, Biden, the official game ball. Straight ahead running by Baptiste, stop short. Also, the LHSA thanking Louisiana Coca-Cola bottlers, title sponsors of the annual high school all-star games. Bank One, sponsor of the LHSA All-State All-Academic Awards. Sports Care of Louisiana, the LHSA's official health care network, providing trainers Second at all down. LHSA events. Reebok, the official shoe of the LHSA. Piccadilly Cafeterias, proud sponsors of the Piccadilly Cup, the LHSA All Sports Award, and Mushmack Photography, the official photographer of all LHSAA events. Second and six, Wagner on the keeper. Will be hauled down shy of the first down Brandon as we approach Wagner, the two minute mark. Brought down by Kendrick Paul. Third down. Kendrick Paul on the stop from his linebacker position. Uh, wearing number 40. Usually wears number 44. And I'll well, tell you, great speed he has. 6 to 205 from his inside linebacker position. Reckless flies around pretty well. Memphis Delta State, USL, Magnese, and USL are among his suitors. Third and short. Who else? Baptiste. Stiffly met, but Garner is the first down. You can hear that. You can hear that pop up here. You can hear the wood crack. Nicholas really put the wood to him that time. Kendrick Nicholas gave away a few pounds, but came on with some good leverage and stopped the first down for a meet. Tailback in his tracks. Good fill. Boy, that's the way you fill for a linebacker. In fact, that was uh, Kendrick Paul filling a knot. Nicholas, Kendrick Paul filling, that's the way you, you draw it up on a, on a chalkboard, the way you want your middle line linebacker to fill. See if Amit tries to air it out one more time before the first half expires. They've had some success in that area with a big completion that set up a touchdown and a failure with an interception. Perry, fake to him, give to Baptiste. Baptiste loses the ball, Carr has it. Carr comes up with the football, recovering that loose ball. Well, it may not be a fumble. Nichols. Nicholas, let's see. Looked to me like it was loose. Yes, Carr's ball. So with 65 ticks to go, Gerald, it looks like the Cougars will get another opportunity. As Baptiste gives up the ball as he's going down and did not see who came up with it. Yes, fact, Nicholas. Nicholas was. Well, this is a great opportunity for Carr. Now, this is better field position than they had a moment ago at the 30-yard line. There's a good look at the fumble and Nicholas scooping it up. A meets out game car in this game, 227 to 70. But the Cougars could go in a halftime with a little bit of the momentum on their side. They're going to have to put the ball in the air. They're out of timeouts. And there's 65 seconds left here in the first half. St. Junior's the most obvious target. Draw single coverage. Straight ahead handoff, Timmy, Timmy Charles. Charles. And Amit's going to have the ball to start the third quarter as well. Buckles making a stop. Great football, speed and savvy. Flies around to the ball, and Charles following the block of Will Lachlan. Well, he fills, Buckles fills the gap, fills in where the line with the uh, guard just released from as Welsh just airs it out. Welsh, Welsh throws it away. Michael Saint Jr., That's a mark of a good linebacker. Fills the spot that the offensive lineman just vacated that area. Uh, of course, Lachlan was pulling, and uh, Buckles did a good job. Is that guy going to give the ball back? I think he wants to keep it as a souvenir. This is not a Saints game. Thank God. Well, great pressure up front by Wilson with the big paw shielding Wilson. Welsh, I should say. And <clears throat> 
third and seven with 36 takes to go. And Coach Watney would like to muster some kind of drive here right before half. Third down. Ball overthrown, intended on the play for flanker Jonathan Salmon. It'll be fourth down for the Cougars with 28 seconds left. Jennifer Jonathan Sam. Sam comes back to the huddle and just <clears throat> misread that, perhaps. May have had to break the route off. And Walsh had just released the ball, let it go. So perhaps a misunderstanding between quarterback and receiver, perhaps. Carr's going to try a long field goal of 45 yards. Andrew Arana in to attempt it. It's low. Andrew no Arana good. Short. But why not? First and ten. Amit's actually going to lose yardage on that deal because in high school, when the field goal goes into the end zone, it comes out to the 20. So you might as well take a shot at it. It's almost right. like a punt that would go into the end zone. Of course, you've got a chance to score some points there. We'll see what Amit does with it. Only 22 seconds. They've still got two timeouts. Now they've gotten the ball three times in their own territory. Haven't used the timeout yet. He probably hit the ball sort of like he'd like to, but um, as you mentioned, with 22 ticks left to go, Amit's going to just nail it down. It's kind of surprising. Uh, they, they've had some success on a long pass. Why not toss it downfield? Well, they'll, they'll get the ball. They'll receive the ball in the second half, so... Uh, no hole from there. Well, that's how his first half winds up. Plenty of offense by a meet, little offense by Carr. C.J. Baptiste helping out the Warriors to a 21-0 halftime advantage in this AAA state championship game. Now we'll take you down to the field for our halftime activities. Now, senior drum majors Bobby Douglas and Kirby Larkin. Also entering with our band are the car majorettes under the direction of Miss Marion Thomas, the car toilet sensation under the direction of Miss Joan Trish, the fantastic flags under the direction of Miss Glenn Delavasso, and the cougarettes under the direction of Miss Judy Biegas, and the junior. High cheerleaders under the direction of Miss Abby Fazan. We now feature the band, band accompanied by all our groups in a precision drill featuring the music by Janet Jackson's recent classic, Velvet Rope, as well as the hit classic by Cut Close, Lovely Thing.
and Miss Rita Amity. Real proud to feature the car pride as a Cougar band performs the Earth, Wind, and Fire hit Brazilian Rhyme.
Check some of the first half stats in just a moment. Baptiste adding to his large first half total. That total 10 carries, 134 yards. That's a 13.4 average, a 62 yard run, his longest of the game. And quarterback Brandon Wagner, five carries, 37 yards. He's also got a 63 yard completion to his wide receiver, Nathan Solomon. For the Carr Cougars, not as much luck offensively. Charles, the leading carrier, five carries, 31 yards. Cedric Welsh, 4-15 for 38 yards. A couple other first-half stats of note. Carr actually holding the edge in time of possession, 13-54 to 10-06. 228 yards for Amit and 64 for Carr. It'll be third down for the Warriors here, Renee, as Carr looks to establish a little momentum here in the second half. Yeah, they need to make a big play on, on defense and turn things around, much like that interception that they uh, were fortunate to come up with in the last, uh, in the second quarter and need to come up with a big play. Boy, well, tight splits Amit has on offense. Wagner on the keeper, and he'll be stopped short of the first down, so... A positive for the Cougars to open up this second half. Kendrick Paul there on the stop. Wagner just following around the right side, following Justin Hutchinson, and uh, not able to get the first down. It'll be a fourth down punting situation, and maybe the Cougars may, ha may uh, have an opportunity to muster some type of offense, get back in this game trailing by 21. This will be uh, a meets first punt of the game. Oh, I remember them having a punt in the first half. Derek Hornsby's punt. Flag on the return. That was Welsh with the return. It's a 28 yard kick. Let's unravel this flag. There's two of them one flag upfield and one flag downfield. Welsh, the quarterback from behind, returning this kick. Did not give him sufficient room to catch the ball, and so. That's, and could also, one of their players could have left a little early as well. Because the other flag is down around the line of scrimmage, so the Cougars could be the beneficiaries here. And that's correct. Those are the two calls. Now the Cougars will have a decision with which to make. Well, you know, Renee Carr has been in this position in this in this building before. When they won their lone state championship against Cecilia, that 13-10 overtime thriller, they came back from 10-0 down in the fourth quarter to win that game. Yes, sure did. And <clears throat> they lost they lost to a meet in the second round in 1994, the year that the Warriors went 14-15-0, uh, won the state title. They lost to meet 6-3. To they also lost to Cecilia by three. 1995. You, you talk about that second round there, Renee. Uh, in 93, Carr defeated Amit 24 0 in the second round. In 94, Amit defeated Carr 6 3 in the second round. I'm sorry I cut you off. No, I was going to just say that it was a lot of battles between those two teams. And, you know, you mentioned Jamaican Dartez on that team. Anthony Claymont, who went to play for USL and now played for the Arizona Cardinals, was also on that team. A 6 7, 355 pound product. And uh, he was about that size when he played for Cecilia. Derek Hornsby. Hornsby to kick again. And, of course, the landscape of 3A has changed. Back to where it was then. I'll explain in just a moment. Wow. Good play by Amit to string this one out, but also a good play. Look out. Loose ball on the carpet. Who's come up with it? The Warriors say it's theirs. 
Ephraim Okacha looks to have come up with the ball after the 33 yard punt. Malcolm Woods was returning that. So a big change of events. The penalty works against the He's Cougars there. The and a, a, a big play by the Warriors here on special teams as just trying to make something happen. The Cougars, Malcolm Woods just gives up the ball and Johnny on the spot for the Warriors. I mentioned number 48, Okacha. And that's going to be a big play now as Amit right back in good field position at the 50-yard line with a 21-point advantage. 9.26 to go here. And just when the Cougars look like something good could happen. Ball stripped right from behind. Look out, Baptiste. He's outside. Flag comes in. Baptiste, wow. This one's going to come back, but still an entertaining run nonetheless. 24-yard pickup there. But it'll be all negated. I talked about Rene, the landscape of 3A, of course, when Cecilia and Carr played, when Amit and St. James played. That was before Evangel had a short hiatus in 3A. They won three straight in 3A, and now they are, of course, in 5A, playing in this classic against West Monroe. They've jumped the ladder and gone from single A some time back. Well, you know, when Baptiste is running, it's like a Mardi Gras float just running over cans, you know? I hope you don't sit up at night thinking up those analogies. He explain, he just explodes into the would-be tacklers, and uh, you're not gonna, the would-be, the initial tackler's not gonna take it down. Once he gets ahead of steam, uh, it's tough to bring him down. And, That's the eighth penalty against him. Eight, 65 yards in infractions. You know, that's, when I see him run, I don't think of a Mardi Gras float. Well, you get a good look at the clip. Good job by the camera crew to pick that one up. Wagner wants to throw. Anyway, he complete his ball. To the secondary, well, go Cletus Gordon. And he gets popped at the end of the play. As Wagner rolling to his right, a little curl route by Gordon, big 6'1 target, a junior, and a very dependable, runs some good routes and comes up with a good big catch right there. Second, as Gordon, Kendrick Paul seems to be down right now and being attended to. Well, he was he was knocked pretty good there. Wow, yes. By Paul. Kendrick Paul, the guy to delay the lumber. And I think that's Gordon still down on the ground. And that's not the way you tackle. You don't lead in with your head like that. Easy way to get injured for both the tackler and the tackle lead. Meet looking to win its second state championship since 1994. Donald career, 25 years in the coaching profession, 193, 97 and one. He's been at a meet for the past eight seasons. Look, see how he's leading in with his head? That's dangerous. Dangerous play. Kendrick Paul really unloaded on him with his 6'2, 205 pound frame. Cletus Gordon is. Shaking the cobwebs out, if you will, and he'll be back. Be back to fight again. Second and short. Baptiste, nowhere to go. This will be third down. The hard defense, Rene. Stephanie here in this second half. Of third down. They can hold right here, though. Get the ball back. The interior line shedding blocks. Great play by Ross and company. And uh, also, you know, that tackle, Michael Holmes. Also, a number of white jerseys elaborating on the tackle. Call it third and two. And that's, he said, no running lanes as it was shut off by the Cougar defense. Straight ahead is Wagner, and he'll be very close to the first down. Good play there. With Perry coming in motion like that, they've handed off to him so often. But Wagner hung on to it and just surged ahead. He may be just shy of the first down. 
They will measure it. They're measure. For a measurement, man. Watch Perry come into your screen right to left. There he is. Straight ahead to go. It gets you thinking. It, it freezes those interior people in uh, just for a moment. That's all they need is one blink of an eye to get beyond the first down marker as Kendrick wow. Paul is in on the stop. And they will be short by a four or five inches. Okay, what do you do here? It'll be four go down. for it. Go for it. Three touchdown lead. You've got C.J. Batiste in the backfield. A good offensive line surge will get the first, will gain the first down for you. And yes, when you have, uh, in fact, Wagner has done quite well from that quarterback position. Now keep in mind, the situation was a little different, but this is how he got its last state championship when St. James went for a fourth down conversion in almost this very spot, hitting towards the same end zone some six years ago. He meets stop St. James, scored on that drive, and scored on another one to put the game away. Wagner, first down. And the chains will move there. Well, it's it's hard to deny. Batiste is an effective weapon first even down. when he's not used. And Wagner just Bounces off left tackle and Kedrick Nicholas makes the stop, but not before he gains first down territory. And clock continues to move. Ball at the 38-yard line, 7:30 and counting here in the third stanza. It's Batiste straight ahead. Submarine running, good for one or maybe two yards. I tell you what, this number 95 for uh, the Car Cougars defensive end, Eric Henderson, a 6'3, 225 pound prospect. We've talked about him before. Uh, he had 16 tackles against Rummel in the spring game. Will be a recruit in the year 2000. Has the same type of abilities, Gerald, as a uh, David Watkins. Maybe play, plays a little bit faster. Will be a linebacker. Kind of a Charles Aero who went on Magnese and now plays in the K football game. Wow, excellent defensive play that time. And that is Eric Henderson. There you go. I tell you what, he's great instinct, and boy, he's going to be a great player. And still a year left to go. Plays that defense, man's that defensive end position. And boy, I tell you what, you don't shake him. We go along with all that talent and size. And wow, picture book defensive end play. Reebok is the official shoe of the LHSAA and sponsor of the Superdome Classic Shoe Bank. So it'll be third down, third and about 12 to go. Look at this, he plays this just the way you draw it up. It does seem that uh, Carr has made some defensive adjustments to counteract the success that Batiste has had. And that may be the reason that it somewhat shut him down in the early going here in the uh, second half. It's like the delay of the game against the meet. Delay delay game. Game. Offense. Offense. Some would say, as you take a look at Donald Career, that this is uh, for the Carr Cougars and head coach Don Watney, his finest coaching job bring his team to this point. Of course, I mentioned they started two and three on the year. There's a lot of expectations for a good squad. They were ranked six. There's Don. Ranked six in the first three A poll release before the season began. Then they fell to ninth after an opening week loss to West Jeff, a 15-13 loss. They rose up to seventh after a 39-8 win over Walker. Stayed at seventh after a 14-26 loss to Curtis. Fell to ninth after a 22 nothing win over Hannon and fell out of the top 10 for the remainder of the season after a 37 3 loss to Carver. And then at the end of the season, they weren't even receiving votes in the top 10. The Carr Cougars, they were seated 11th in the seeding process, which this year was used for the first time. And my understanding is there'll Third be down. motions made during the offseason meetings to tweak the process somewhat so it doesn't. Penalized teams, a team like Evangel, for instance, had to travel three times as a top ranked team. But some would say this is Coach Don Watney's best coach team. Big pass straight down the middle. Oscar Perry there for the reception from Wagner. And I'll tell you, when he meet completes him, Renee, they're big. A 26 yard pass there. And he runs a seam route, and Wagner just lays it out in front of him in the 4 5 speedster. 
pulls it in and scurries up the field for a nice gain. Has some protection as it begins to break down. Takes a shot at the end from Chad Ruffin. But uh, he completes the pass deep in car territory. And you know, there's a meet Warriors, a senior laden offense with nine starters of seniors. They've been to the quarterfinals three years in a row. They've seen it all. And it's time for them to bust the door down. Sweep around the right hand side. That's Jarrell Carter. Jarrell who has Carter. generally returned punts Ball in this game, Carter. getting the carry there. Down by the Warrior offense Second will hash down. just outside the 15 yard line, up at the 16 yard line. And Carter with that 4 4 speed, great athlete. He manages a free safety position on defense, but you have to be cognizant of him when he's in the game because he's so explosive. More speed for the Elite Warriors. And uh, nice tackle assist by Michael Holmes. Talked about him. He may play on the defensive side of the ball. Has played tight end and uh, wide receiver. Mississippi State, Southern Mississippi, Utah, Ole Miss, and Clemson are among his suitors. Straight ahead running. Submarine for a few. That's Baptiste. Right down by Howard Ross. Talked about Carr right and the expectations they've had. Well, Amit has been ranked number one all season. They were ranked number one in the pre-district. Or uh, should I say the preseason. The poll released then and they held the number one spot each and every week. Their closest game was when Donald played David career and it was a 13-0 Amit win over Kentwood. And the Kangaroos, by the way, defeating Independence, Amit's District 8 arch rival in overtime, 28-27. And Amit beating Independence 21-6 in a 1-3 matchup earlier this season. Of course, Independence losing a car in overtime in the regional round over at Berman Stadium. Another, uh, another strong team north of the lake in the Amit Warriors. And that'll be a first down for them as they are now hashing closer to the goal line, Renee, and Carr needs to come up with a big play. Need to dig their heels in a little bit and <clears throat> kind of stiffen up defensively. This is the strong suit of this team, the defensive unit of, of the Car Cougars. And they're facing a challenge, first and six. Look out, Betty smells the end zone, he's in. Nine play, 50 yard drive for a meet. Gives them a four touchdown bulge. And the inside track for the 3A state championship. Baptiste, 17 carries, 158 yards. That's unbelievable. He's got a couple of touchdowns to go along with that. The second one, and both the same type of style. Well, of course, he ran away from the defensive players the last time uh, he scored, but he has just exploded against the defense. And extra point is good, increasing their lead to 28 to 0. Damian Thompson's extra point is true. 28 0 to meet in control of this 3A state championship game. Meet with the 28 nothing lead over Carr. They've scored three in the first half. It's a good look at C.J. Batiste. One here in the second half. Another strong kickoff. Be an automatic touchback. That's so hard to find in high school football. Strong kicking game. You just you just don't see it a lot. Happy Warrior there, leading the troops. Faithful. telling you to remember to pick up your laundry on the way home. Don't leave it at the cleaners. We'll see if Carr can pick up some yardage, maybe a few first downs. Idealistically, they'd like to get into the end zone, climb back into this one. They have the capacity to strike quickly. Welsh, who is an accomplished runner, will put his head down and Burrow forward to about the 23-yard line. Wow, that defense of Emita's just been 
tenacious all over Welsh and company and not giving them anywhere to go. Uh, shutting down the passing attack for the most part and get Michael St. Jr.'s in check most of the evening thus far. Thus, consequently, a 28-point lead to three minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Amit looks like they may have an opportunity for their first championship since 1994. If, unless Carl can come storming back with some offensive attack here in the third. Welsh's well, pass incomplete. Looking for St. Junior's. Welsh, four carries, four yards. I saw him play a game earlier this year at Bell Chase. That helped Carl lock up the district championship. He scored all of his team's touchdowns. Well, he's quite a talent, and they just disturbed this pattern right here just enough. Maybe the carpet may have stuck, uh, made a little too sticky, and St. Junior's could make his cut as accurate as he would like. And, uh, that carpet gets a little stick, a little uh, sticky at times. Sticks to your shoes, and uh, it's good and fast at times. But you don't, uh, if you're not used to playing on it, it takes some adjustment. You also throw it away there. Cedric Welch is fast. That hurts because it was third down. You almost Four rather down. take the sack in that situation. Eight straight incompletions now for Welsh, we're told. Threw it away, and uh, I think that's more the a meat defense disrupting things than it is the car offense. Absolutely, not, I, not I, clicking. I concur, and now I the cars, they have to relinquish the ball, and Amit's going to get pretty good field position. Should get good field position out of this. Good look at Coach Don White. Long night for Coach Don. Great night for Coach Don Olden. This pass midfield, it'll be first and ten for the Warriors. First and ten. After the 30-yard kick. You know, Renee, that uh, Carr has allowed just three opponents to gain 100 yards or more rushing. Only one team did it to him in the regular season. That was Curtis. And it happened twice in the playoffs. Last week, Turlene's Catholic in the semifinals couldn't do it. The Rebels, 82 yards rushing, and Carr stopped him three times inside the Carr 25-yard line. But in this game, Baptiste by himself, 17 carries, 158 yards. And there he goes again for more. So that, so that really gives you an appreciation of how special a back C.J. Baptiste is, giving the kind of defense Carr has played all year. You know, really, all the opponents, as you said, uh, held all the opponents to 100 yards or less except three of them. And, you know, wow, he's just for a type of effort that Amit has, you know, very few teams have gained 100 yards rushing on this team. Uh, of course, of Carr boasting that nine-game winning streak as well. So uh, they didn't get here by mistake. And it goes to show what kind of talent Amit has and what kind of season Coach Watney has put together for the Carr Cougars. Look out. That's Perry. He's got room in the secondary. He's going to score. Oscar Perry, a 47-yard touchdown run, and Amit's giving it to Carr every which way. And Perry scores touchdown number six on the season. As we mentioned, coming into this game, he had 895 yards rushing. No end around with Perry coming from his wingback position, 4-5 speed. I want to tell you what, he's really a good block. Unbelievably good block, and Perry just skirts down the sidelines. And you're not going to catch him from behind as he bounces that lead up to 34 points from the extra point of coming. Damian Thompson on that block. Good. 34 nothing. Check that 35 nothing on the ensuing extra point in the waning moments of the third quarter in this AAA state championship game. Look at the downfield work in the block. Well, actually, we missed the block, but my bad there. But another look downfield as Perry brings it into the end zone for the touchdown.
Nothing more special than scoring one in the state championship game here at the Dome. Hey, buddy? That's not his real hair. Um, what excited crowd he made hands here. You sure about here. that? And, uh, now, that's their real hair. Yes. We saw the uh, Port Barry iota game first before this one. As Ace brings it back on the kickoff return. And we saw a lot of uh, Port Berry players with blonde hair. Colored blonde hair. That was their real hair. It just wasn't their real color. Yes. So you never know when you're looking at hair. Never thought we'd be discussing hair here at the state championship game. Grabbing the face mask on the Warriors. A little face mask call against the Warriors will tack 15 yards onto this kickoff return and give the Cougars more advantageous field position with which to work. 10 penalties, 85 yards. You know, one thing that Emit didn't feel like they could do is out physical car. They've tried to use speed to the ball. They've done just that. That's been the uh, way they drew it, up, drew it up before they got here. That's been the diagram, and they've done a great job following through with uh, their game plan. Tough inside running. Aaron Singleton with the carry. He's a little bit of a jitterbug. Gives you a little different dimension back there as opposed to Ace or Timmy Charles. He's a 4.65 guy. Uh, got good explosion. Good look right there, Aaron Singleton. Also, he's a 21 foot long jumper, so he's got great spring in those legs. He can really move out quickly. Tori Dennis now in, the sophomore. In for Cedric Welsh. So I don't know if Cedric's on the bench. Just pulled out at this late juncture of the game because of the score, but Senior has obviously gone through Coach Watney's system and I would think like to play this one out. Don't seem to see any injury to, to Welsh. Uh, he may be sitting out this series, perhaps. Oh, and he is. Cedric Welsh is in the game. We look for him everywhere except in the game. He's lining up as a wide receiver. Trying to make something happen. Timmy Charles. You know, Tori Dennis is more of a runner than a thrower. He, second half. Had a great second half against Westlake and Independence, of course. He can be very special, uh, but he had a 72-yard pass to St. Junior's, and 50 of that distance went in the air as we come to the end of the third stanza. On to the fourth quarter we come. A meet separated from another state title by but 12 minutes here at the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Second and five. The Cougars step up to the line of scrimmage. As we're informed, this quarterback switch is something the Cougars did throughout the playoffs, including their win against Turlings last week. Fake into the line and nominal gain for Dennis there. And Tory Dennis had a trailing Cedric Welch behind him. He did chose not to pitch to him. But, uh, you know, Dennis is a good quarterback and. Uh, He'll be back next year as Welsh will depart. Got to pass the baton from, from Welsh to Dennis, the Southmore. Uh, it's 5'7", 160, as, as we mentioned, a good runner. He's got 129 yards, hasn't thrown any touchdowns, but a couple of picks, and uh, got some very, very valuable game experience in the playoffs against Westlake and Independence in a couple of wins. Third down. We'll give it to Welsh. It'll be a flag stream in. Welsh will be dropped short of the first down. Dennis will get some valuable experience. Now, he'll be a junior next year. He's got quality playing time this year. So he'll have experience next year and then, of course, have a senior year in front of him as well. That was part of the reason for success for Welsh was that he had three years playing in the car system. You know, the thing about Welsh, too, is, is not only is he... Uh, excel on the football field. He trades his uh, cleats in for sneakers on the hardwood. He's a point guard on the Cougar basketball team, and as you and I both know, the 
Cougar basketball team have, has had some success for years and years, and I'm sure they'll have another outstanding year this coming season. A lot of success. Coach Rock and Coach Rob doing a great job over there. As far as picked up a state championship. Third down and 12. Look out, fumble. Like some early movement there, and Cougars are moving backwards here. Batiste with 170 yards Corey on 19 Jr. carries. A couple play. touchdowns. Wagner also with a couple of scores on 41 down. yards, nine totes. So uh, they've, those two have done most of the damage. And of course, Perry with that 47 yard John, he's got five carries as well, and going with a touchdown. Coach Career very happy right now with a as his team pitches a shutout with 35 points up on the scoreboard and trips left here for the Cougars. Look out. Dennis stripped of the ball, picks it up. An advantageous bounce for the sophomore, and he gets hammered going out of bounds. Well, Jer Jarrell Carter is second time he's unloaded on a Cougar. And uh, someone who's not not of great size, 168, 4-4 four, four speed, great explosion though. Watch as he's flushed out by Dorsett, buckles, fumbles the ball away, and Pursuit finally catches him. First to get a hand on him is Gordon, bang! Carter, you see right there as Buckles flushes him out. Picks up the, the loose ball and skirts of the sideline, short of a first down. And so the ball will go over to the Warrior offense. What a credit to the coaching profession that gentleman has been. Well, it'll definitely be a loss to not only the local coaching community, if, if and when Coach Watney retires. There was some talk about that possibly being after this season. Certainly also, he's been a a beacon in the Orleans Parish public school system as their teams have traditionally struggled in playoffs with the exception of squads like Carver McDonough 35 had some good years an excellent Warren Easton team for instance this year couldn't get past the first round against Natchitoches Central at home the Orleans Parish public school systems are really a, have not performed well in the playoffs but for Carr Carr the first Orleans Parish public school system to reach the finals in eons when they did it back in 93. He's just, he, he's just done a, a, a wonderful job, his entire staff. They run a quality program in Algiers from, from top to bottom. I'm happy to say that. There's Baptiste right here. Got an injury timeout. Dennis Edwards for a meet. Very slow to get up. You know, he's got a Coach Watney's got an outstanding staff, as both of these teams do defensively. Defensive coordinator Willie Brooks. Of course, we mentioned Wayne Hardy. Spencer Ross, inside linebacker, used to play at Southern. Uh, so he's got some great men who assist him along the way. Of course, Frank Wilson. For a St. Aug product and Nichols State running back and Larry Rout does a good job of the offensive line. Late of Covington High School and the Tulane Green Wave. Tomorrow, everyone is welcome back. Gates open at 12 noon and one ticket is good. The pitch to Baptiste and he falls down in the backfield. Boy, I tell you what, he was, they wanted to isolate him on a quick pitch to get outside. He may have frustration. I tell you what, he he had that corner, and once he get ahead, gets up ahead of steam, we mentioned it's like releasing the break in the driveway, and you're not going to stop him. What about the Mardi Gras float in the tin can? <laughs> well, that too. But he uh, he's very tough to stop, and with that four or five speed, he can hit the corner pretty quickly. Well, we spent some time talking about Don Watney. How about Donald Career? Oh, wow. What a great job he has done over at a meet. And Franklin Tinney took him to the top of the hill and done the same job here. Wow. Good play defensively. As Holmes makes the stop along with Donovan Grayson. Donovan Grayson, we talked about him. He could be, he's an all district basketball player with that 6'6 height. 
But as he fills in his 218-pound frame, uh, he's going to be a good one on the football. His, his future could lie on the football field. Again, it, comparisons are made to his abilities to David Watkins and Robert Royal, both of them signed with LSU. Of course, Royal is still a tight end with the Tigers. As Coach Career talking to Batiste, I mean, we've known what Batiste has done in this game. You can see the intensity on Coach Career's face. You don't coach 25 years and lead 35 nothing in the fourth quarter and let up. Coach knows what it takes to get here. As you mentioned, did it with Franklinton losing to St. Martinville in that game as Welsh returns this punt. In 25 years, that's a that's a long time. You, you don't find many coaches with that kind of tenure in a game. Of course, we'll see JT Curtis and Roman Bates in the 4A game. They've both got 30 plus years. JT at 30. Bates at 33, but and when you get above 20, 25 years, you're, you're talking some serious time putting in. Yes, you're absolutely right. And of course, a lot of Coach Watney's time was put in on the junior high level. Yes. So it doesn't count, so to speak. And, you know, when they say, well, he's been at Carr for eight seasons, he's been there longer, but Carr was not a varsity school then. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you what, you talk about the talent that Amit has, but Coach Career has done the most with what he has. You don't just throw those players on a field and, they perform. You have to put them in the right spots, schemes and such. And uh, of course, we're dealing with young men here, and that's not always an easy task in Coach Career to go undefeated 14 and 0. And it looks like yet another state title for the Warriors. He's done a yeoman's task and done a great job, Coach Career and Don Watney. Coach all the way to the end. Can't tell by the look in their faces they're way up or way down in this game. Sam's on the reception, or Sam, I should say, on the reception from Dennis. Ten-yard pickup. It'll be first down. Dennis looking for more. Down the field. Finds Welsh inside the 30. Down to the 26-yard line. A late flag as well comes streaming in. And you know, uh, I'd like to know about the career's daddy because you've got both Donald and David having a lot of success. That's got to be a bloodline running there to get both of those both of those guys having a successful coaching career. One in a meet, of course, one in Kentwood. The two brothers, as you've mentioned, Renee setting a, a new record here with both of them being in the state championship at one time. Uh, David's got two, Donald's got one. Donald's about to pick up his second here today. Well, they come from good stock. I'm sure the acorn corn don't fall far from the tree. I'd like, I'd like to hear some of the conversations they have around family gatherings if it turns to football or not. Bet you it does. Tory Dennis doing a pretty admirable job here bringing the Cougars back, trying to get him into scoring position. And at 7.02, the lights are starting to dim here for the Cougars, but Dennis with a great running effort here. Just down to the goal line. He'll be just shy. A 12-yard pickup for the sophomore. And it'll be first and goal for the Cougars. So a little spark here for Carr. Dennis has done a pretty good job. He can be special, as we mentioned. He's got some those innate talents that uh, allow him to step it up around game time. And he's going to, he's learned from one of the best in Cedric Welch. And he'll be around in the next year and the next couple of years, as a matter of fact. So I would say the quarterback position is in pretty solid ground for the Cougars in the foreseeable future. And why not let Dennis keep it into the end zone for the touchdown? The car faithful will have something to talk about tomorrow as they cheer. It took only four plays to cover 55 yards. Young Southmore taking it the final steps as he breaks the plane into the end zone and an extra point up coming here at the 6 26 mark. Dennis four carries 39 yards. Majority of which were on that drive. The meat player shaken up, so there's a stoppage in play. As he is being attended to. You know, good surge by the offensive front for the Cougars allowed Dennis to break the plane. Howard Ross and Lockley and company getting him into the end zone. Spetsy Otis, big 6'5, 360 pound product of the car Cougars leaves the field. Looks like he may be have a slight injury. That's uh, a meet there, buddy. 
and Troy Brumfield. But I know that's what you meant. No, no, I saw Speciotis leave the field on the car side. Did you? Yes. Don't correct me. It's a big guy. It's hard to miss. I yes. won't have to take you out back. <laughs> Extra point is good. 35-7 with 626 left in this contest as Amit is cruising to its second state title. The Louisiana High School Athletic Association thanking State Farm Insurance and its Louisiana State Farm agents. State Farm sponsors all state championship trophies and awards and all 23 sports of the LHSAA. The LHSA also thanking the following. Gatorade, the official thirst quencher and title sponsor of the Superdome Classic. Your local Southern Quality Ford dealer presenting sponsors of the Superdome Classic. Baden, the official game ball. Louisiana Coca-Cola Bottlers, title sponsors of the annual high school all-star games. Bank One, sponsor of the LHSA All-State All-Academic Awards. Sports Care of Louisiana, the LHSAA's official health care network providing trainers at all LHSAA events. Reebok, the official shoe of the LHSAA. Piccadilly Cafeterias, proud sponsors of the Piccadilly Cup, the LHSAA All-Sports Award. And Bush Mac Photography, the official photographer of all LHSAA events. This is all part of the LHSA State Farm State Championship Network. Thank you to these companies for supporting high school athletics in Louisiana. Onside's kick was recovered by the Warriors, and they do maintain possession, recovered by Derek Hornsby, number 15 for the Elite Warriors. And now with 619, if the Warriors can muster any kind of drive, they can eat up enough clock and not allow the Cougars much time to come roaring back. Of course, the Cougars do need a turnover or two to get back in this contest. Carr with three timeouts and meet with two. Maybe some straight running ahead there. Nothing fancy. Brandon Wagner, the ball. As Wagner will keep the ball. Second down. It'll be second down. This has got to be the hard part of the game as well for a team like Carr that has worked so hard to go so far, and the game has been in control of a meet for the majority of the second half, if not all of the second half. They brought a 21-0 lead in at halftime. Carr's been here twice before, winning by three, losing by three. This time they'll get a taste of how the other half lives. But I have no doubt Carr is at a program status and they'll return, as will he meet another year. It'll be third down, Rene. Well, the Cougars can't fight the clock right now. They can't do much with what they, uh, you know, with the timeouts. They do have three timeouts remaining. And uh, Emit, looking at a third and eight. If they can hold them this, which they have, they will have an opportunity to get the kick back, get the ball back on a punt. Time is certainly not an ally of the Car Cougars at this venture. Hey, you don't know that that's not as real here. Sure, I know that guy. Maybe he went to the barber today and got a color. He's having a good time. He's having a good time, I'll tell you what. That's what the Superdome Classic is all about. And uh, the faithful here from both teams are really, really having a good time and enjoying themselves. And, that's what this thing is all about. Some of the meet faithful. Whoa, look out. All kind of trouble on the punt snap, and Derek Hornsby will have to eat it. Cooper's right there to cover him up. Right now by Kendrick Ball. Ball goes over. It'll be first and ten for Carr. That's a 17-yard loss there. Well, now the Cougars will have 
new light here with at the 354 mark. And Amit just, uh, they've lost the shutout, but still have the upper hand here as a warrior looks a bit tired here, if you will. But that camera will bring you to life. Get your son up there, down, sweetheart. For a lot of happy Amit warriors. Dennis overshoots his intended target. Tony Dennis okay. Looks like he's anticipated that that curl route Michael, may have gone a little bit longer and uh, overshot his target. So a miscommunication, if you will, between quarterback and receiver. Well, you know, one valuable thing about being in the playoffs is not dissimilar from in college, if you make the bowl, you pick up three or four extra weeks of practice. You know, you talk about a young team and young players like like this guy, Dennis, that's out there. Heck, now he picks up four extra weeks of practice as a sophomore that if Carr didn't make the playoffs, he wouldn't have had as he's dropped right there on the sack. So that's going to pay off some dividends next year. Leonard Brumfield, the man there to escort Dennis down to the turf. Really. A seven-yard loss. And Brumfield will return for his senior season next year. And speaking of some young talent, Carr Cougars also have a couple of young offensive linemen, maybe in the mold of a Bernard Robinson, who uh, now toils. There's some happy workers right there. Toils for the Tulane Green Wave, where he played his high school football. Uh, Roman Green, number 68, 6'2", 245-pound product. And the left tackle, number 73, Nicholas Madison, a 6'3", 250. That ball almost picked off. Will be the uh, foundation of a good offensive line coming back next season. And uh, both those will both be some major college prospects, maybe in the mold of a Bernard Robertson. And uh, Malcolm Woods returns. Tory Dennis will come back for his junior year as as will Ace. As, he, as he's going to be a good running back. He will be an outstanding running back and one of the top running backs in the city, I would assume, by the time his senior year rolls around. And Everyone will know how to say his name then. Of course, Amit returns Jarrell Carter from his defensive backfield position. Uh, they have a couple of... Look out. Uh -oh. Dennis. Oh, after the bad snap, things are getting a little sloppy out there now. And Buckles makes the stop and really slams him down, and Tory Dennis is slow to get up. Twenty-yard loss on the play. And Tory Dennis really just trying to find something to do here, a hole to climb in, and Dorsett Buckles makes the stop. Well, we'll show you what kind of talent Buckles has. They feel like he could be an outstanding running back if he chose to play or if they chose to have him at that position. All district performer in 1998. I'm sure we'll do so this again. will be a repeat, a repeat on that team this year. Flies around to the ball. Did an outstanding job. And Amit once again with possession. Ball goes over and dance. Look out. Guess who? That tee straight up the middle. A 35-yard touchdown. That's got to bring him close to 200 yards. He goes over 200 with that carry. He should be about 205 or, or 210 in that range. 203. Arithmetic breath on 24 carries. Well, I tell you, same play as it was the first touchdown as he shot up the middle and credit the interior line as 5'6", 185-pound Reggie Harvey, the center, flanked by Edwards and Hutchinson. And throw in Rashawn Lewis and Roosevelt McGee the tackles with some outstanding surge and blocking up front allowing Baptiste for that touchdown run got the short choppy step but boy he's moving 4-5 and he goes stays a 40 and a 4-5 extra point is no good so the score will remain 41-7 third touchdown of the game for Baptiste well, that's so I'm sure on scrimmage. is going to be awarded the MVP the performance so of this ball game Flag on the extra point. As they are unraveling things downstairs. And the penalty. 
penalty is waved off. And it will remain 41-7. Meet with the advantage of the car. Gonna finish a perfect undefeated season. I tell you what, to go undefeated in 15 weeks, you've gotta be good, but you've also gotta be lucky. Yes, you really do, and, and uh, Amit has been both. Just outside of two minutes left in this contest, 2.38. Carr will have another shot offensively. Here's a good look at C.J. Baptiste. This is a good time to be an elite warrior. You get extended time on the field to enjoy the victory. Whoa, that ball. Just a knuckleball just caught the turf there and stopped. And they anticipated going to the end zone. It did not. Ten yard return for Ace. 229 left. Well, second half drives for a meet. And they stack up like this. They started at their own 26 to start the second half. Four plays and a punt. Then if you're a Warrior fan, the good stuff started. Starting at midfield, nine plays, touchdown. Midfield, two plays, touchdown. Own 45, four plays, touchdown. Their own uh, at midfield, four plays, punt. And the Amit 35, one play, touchdown. It should be the card 35 for that last one. But obviously an impressive offensive performance, especially in the second half. And Amit had 21 first half points. Now we look at a 41-7 score as we wrap things up here on day one of the LHSA Gatorade Superdome Classic. Cedric well. A little premature movement on the left side of the car Cougars, but uh, left unnoticed, so they will continue to play at the, as we approach the two-minute mark here in the final stanza. You think you know more than the officials? No. I wouldn't think so. Linebacker trio comes to the sidelines. Chris Gordon, Dorset Buckles, and Ephraim Okacha did an outstanding job for the Warriors. A primary reason they are undefeated and looking to capture their second state title since 1994. That was Welch running first. that last ball. Actually, their first state title since 1994. Senior Welsh in the final moments of his career at Carr, and it's been a super career that he's had. Pass incomplete on third down, and clock will stop with 101 left in the contest. And Lawrence Johnson, a 6'5", 230-pound former tight end, flanks out of the left, pass intended for, and I'll tell you what, he's like an offensive tackle out there, and boy, he gets, gets his hands on the ball, he's going to be quite a load to bring down when falls incomplete as Dory Dennis and company are facing 61 ticks to go here in the 3A championship matchup. Straight ahead carry should pick up the first down. Allow the Cougars to hang on to the ball. And keep it out of the hands of C.J. Baptiste and company. Injured player down, slow to unpile. As the last one off the bottom of the stack. That's Johnny Jackson, the senior fullback, 5'10", 190. So far, the first day has been very well attended as anticipated. Tomorrow's going to be <coughs> equally as, as uh, attended, and uh, attendance figures should go up from prior years. A lot of coaches here on the college and high school level. <coughs> Good to see some 
familiar faces in the Dotsi uh, Superdome. Pass by Dennis incomplete. With 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Yeah, it's kind of the place to be. There's a coach's uh, convention and clinic that surround the activities here in the Dome, and rightfully so. And she was, it was a great thing to bring all these games beneath one roof and put them in one place. And, you know, instead of having a night like tonight where you'd have five state championship games, or back when the, this started, it was only four classifications, you'd have four state championship games going on around the state. The coverage would be diffused. Here you've got all the attention focused on one place in one game at a time. Great for the fans, great for the schools. Nearly intercepted. So Stepping in front of that, Damian Euron really picked it off. Euron is 5'11", 180 pounds, sophomore. Manning the corner position and he'll be back next year. Super hands, exceptional abilities. And he's one of those youngsters that will be back next year, just a sophomore. Final offensive numbers, Renee, as things wind down to meet 374 yards of total offense, Carr 124. So in a, a defensive game, Amit kept its end of the bargain up in Carr. It did not, and that's why the Warriors are going to finish undefeated. Carr's nine-game winning streak will be snapped, and it'll be the second state championship for Coach Donald Career, and for one night, he's equal with his brother David, who will try for his third tomorrow at Kentwood. There goes Coach Donald Career being carried on the shoulders of his players to the middle of the field where he'll meet with Coach Don Watney. And Tangibahoa Parish as another state champion. This one, the Amit Warriors, 41-7, to the final count. Let's go down to the field for our trophy presentation.
The next award is the State Farm Outstanding Player for Carr High School, selected by the working media. Presenting the award is State Farm Agent Manny Hidalgo of New Orleans, and it goes to number 13, Nile Lagania. The next award is the Biden Official Game Ball, being presented by Southern Quality Ford. Southern Quality Ford, representing Southern Quality Ford is Mr. Sam Johnson of Amy City Ford, accompanied by Mr. Eddie Boyd and Mr. Timson Edebri of Don Bone Ford. The official game ball goes to head coach Donald Correa of Amy High School. Final count here from the Dome in the 3A state championship game, 41 to 7. Renee, a meet coming in here. They've been powerful all season, seated number one, ranked number one for the entire season, and we saw a good display tonight. Tonight, why they are the top team in the state of Louisiana. 15 and 0, and not many teams get there. You have to be good, and you have to be lucky. And again, we talked about it. Nine players on defense for that Warrior team ran a 4 6 40 or better speed kills, and it did tonight. It sure did. And CJ Baptiste, one of the big reasons. He had over 200 yards on the ground, picked up the MVP award, and three rushing touchdowns for that senior back. And you can see why Tennessee, LSU, and a host of other schools, two and included, are hot after his services. 5'11", 225, 4'5", 40, and boy, he's a total package. Emit had all cylinders rolling tonight. Well, two career brothers in this state championship game. The first one takes care of business in the 3A state championship game. We'll see how brother David fares in the 1A state championship game, but tonight, the Amit Warriors over the Clark Cougars by a final count of 41-7. For my buddy Renee Nato, I'm Gerald Duhon saying so long, everybody.